so guys if you are new to my channel then please subscribe to this channel and click the bell icon to get the notification for upcoming videos hello friends welcome back to another video of automation test insider so today i'm going to talk about what do you mean by verification and validation and what is the difference between these two so before i start v model v model or v and v model it's very important very very important to understand like what do you mean by verification and validation and what is the difference between them so let's talk about like what even verification and validation today and uh, difference between them and then probably next video i'll talk about a v model so that you can understand better so before i take you to my ppt where we'll understand the the proper definition and difference between these two let me give you an example so that you can understand you can relate better like what do you mean by verification and validation mm -hmm. so suppose you you are buying any product from any e-commerce website take an example uh, amazon so what you going to do first thing is you open the either you open the browser or open the app and you will select your uh, uh, pro, uh, your product based on your need like suppose you want to buy a t-shirt so based on your size uh, the brand which you want to uh, from which you you want to buy you select that brand and then color you choose as per your uh, uh, choice and then uh, you do add to cart now you added the uh, product in the cart and from there before making the payment what you going to do is you will verify all those things like uh, whether i have selected the proper size or not the color which i have uh, selected earlier it's fine or not and then address where it will be delivered the uh, where where address is proper or not and the price also if you have any uh, kind of uh, coupon code or something you apply that also and verify the price at the end like how much charge it will uh, it is going to uh, cost you right i mean how much is the cost cost of the product with the delivery charge and everything and another thing is you will uh, 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 you will see the return policy as well so these are the different things you you verify before making the payment so these these are the things is nothing but a verification because you have uh, you did not get the product yet but you verifying all these things by just seeing the product so this is nothing but the verification now once it is delivered to your address what you going to do is you will test that right and uh, uh by wearing that uh, product let's say t-shirt so you'll verify like how, how is the size uh, how is the how is the color looks like and everything so if it is not suitable for you then you'll return it because earlier you have verified the return policy and all so after getting the product you'll do the actual testing of the product so that is nothing but the validation so this is the difference between verification and validation so same thing happens in case of verification and validation in testing so i'll take you my ppt i'll take you to my ppt where we'll understand like what is the what do you mean by verification the proper definition of verification and validation and difference between them so let's get started so guys let's talk more about verification and validation and at the beginning of this video i have given a very good example of verification and validation so before getting the product whatever you do the investigation is nothing but the verification and once you get the product whatever you do uh, whatever you do the uh, investigation is nothing but the validation so same thing happens in software testing as well software testing verification and validation so before i start the v model it's very important to understand verification and validation so in coming days i'll talk about uh, v model so let's focus on verification and validation as of now so here i have listed down the difference the definition of verification and validation and difference between them so verification is the process of checking the document like brd srs crs customer requirement specification design code and programs and uh, validation is testing and validation of actual product so if you see like v model we have one side this is nothing but the verification part and this is validation part so i don't want to talk more about the v model as of now but this part the left side part is called the verification and the right side is validation here is the the left side is also called sdlc it is the part of software development life cycle process and this is part of stlc testing life cycle 
so here in hdlc like we have uh, requirement gathering the design coding all these phases comes under hdlc so verification is the process of checking the documents different requirement documents design coding and programs is nothing but the verification and actual testing once we get the product testing and validation of actual product is called validation now the proper definition like are we building the product right that is the proper definition of verification and in another words software meets the specification or not here we talk more about the specification of the product here we are checking whether we are developing right product or not and if you talk about validation are we building the right product or not software meets the requirements here we talk more about requirement or not we check whether the developed module is right or not so this is the difference like in terms of uh, definition and the second thing is third point is static testing this is comes under static testing and this is dynamic testing so in the next slide i'll talk more about like what are the different methods of uh, static testing and dynamic testing so these are the different methods guys inspection reviews and walkthroughs so these are the part of static testing basically here we review the document walk through we go through documents inspect inspection all these comes under static testing and here in validation we have unit integration system acceptance all levels of testing these are four levels of testing probably we'll discuss later on in detail but just for your understanding understanding like in validation we follow all the levels of testing as well as all functional and non-functional testing in validation part and here QA comes under verification QC comes under validation so here you can see in V model we have this part as quality assurance and this part as quality control so in the next video I'll talk about uh, what, what do you mean by quality assurance and what do you mean by quality control so left side is called quality assurance right side is quality control and QA involved here like quality assurance analyst involved in verification part uh, so probably you have heard the CMMI, CMMI process so there are different CMMI process areas are there so based on the company's level like level 3 level 4 level 2 whatever level 5 so we have certain process areas so that is a different chapter guys probably will discuss later on only so based on the uh, like uh, level of CMMI they follow the QA used to follow the process areas they have different process areas and they'll uh, prepare the documents they'll uh, track the uh, projects uh, progress and all metrics will be there so a lot of factors are there in QA uh, in QA's responsibilities and here tester involved with the help of QA so here the actual testing uh, process is done in validation so uh, of course testers are involved with the help of quality analyst seventh point is point is it comes first before validation so verification comes before validation so it comes later and it finds the bug early in the development life cycle and it finds the bugs that verification cannot catch so when we start the development process so whenever uh, uh, if any if you get any bug related to if requirement is not mismatching i mean required is, uh, is ambiguous or uh, it is not matching as per the customer require uh, needs so we can raise the defects bugs early in the development life cycle whereas uh, in once we get the product we do the actual testing and there mostly like uh, functional and non-functional related defects will get so this is the difference between verification and validation so thank you guys for watching please like this video share it and comment if you have any questions and uh, subscribe to, uh, to this channel and click the bell icon to get the notification for upcoming videos thank you so much have a nice day bye bye hello friends welcome back to another video of automation testing insider so today I'm going to talk about like what do you mean by quality assurance and what do you mean by quality control 
and what is the difference between them. So I'll take you directly to my PPT where we'll discuss what is the difference between what do you mean by quality assurance, quality control and what is the difference between them. So let's get started. So guys, let's talk about quality assurance QA and quality control QC. But before I start quality assurance and quality control, let's talk about like what do you mean by quality. So in simple terms, quality means if any product is fit for our use or fit for our purpose is called quality. So it's all about meeting needs, expectations with respect to functionality, design, uh, reliability and price. It's called a quality product. And what do you mean by assurance? So assurance is nothing but kind of positive declaration of a product or service which gives us conf confidence. Okay, so that guarantees, uh, that gives the guarantee that this product work without any problem. That is nothing but the assurance. So in, uh, in software terms, how do you define quality assurance? So it is a procedure to ensure that the quality of software product or products or services provided to the customer is called the quality assurance. And uh, Quality mainly focuses on improving software development life cycle. In the last video we have seen one side of the V model is called the verification and the other side is validation. Similarly this part is called quality assurance and this is quality control. So here we have software development life cycle. Here we have testing life cycle. Software testing life cycle. QA mainly focuses on improving software development life cycle and uh, nowadays this QA becomes SQA as well software quality assurance. Now what are the different uh, stages of uh, quality assurance to make sure that quality assurance tech, tech, uh, is on place in any company. So there are four uh, steps like we have plan, do, check and act, plan, do, check, act. So when planning what we do, we should plan the process related objectives, process related activities we should plan process to make sure all the process is on place, do is nothing but do. Uh, changes to the existing process or uh, the development of the new process is called the do. Check what we do, monitoring the process. It is monitoring the process. Monitoring the process and act. Take actions to improve the process. So this is act is nothing but the improvement improvement two is kind of changes to the existing process or development of the new process so these are the four stages involved in quality assurance guys and uh, there are some certifications in quality assurance probably you might have heard about same level same i level and we have iso 9000 so these are the quality standards uh, uh, certifications which company used to do uh, when we call like uh, if any company is like several same level three or four right so company has to follow certain process areas if it is same level three then there are certain process areas which company uh, has to follow so who will handle this qu uh, quality assurance process so company used to hire quality analyst who will take care of all the quality assurance related activities all the process areas they will make sure that every documents everything is on place and uh, they used to prepare the templates as well we cannot use any template without any uh, cert i mean without we, we, without certification we cannot use any templates 
that has to be as per the process take an example suppose we want to use any uh, test case summary document or test case uh, authoring document test cases document or test plan all uh, should be certified by QA and uh, the proper template should be there and in sim level if you have probably you might have already aware we have five stages like initial uh, repeatable defined managed and optimizing so those are the five different stages of cm level now let's talk about quality control so the other side of the v model v model will discuss later on so just to explain you guys uh, like what do you mean by qa and qc that's why i have uh, i took the help of this v diagram now let's talk about qc what do you mean by qc so QC is nothing but it's a software engineering process to ensure quality in a product or service. So basically it examines the end product. Once product is developed, so this is like quality assurance is part of when product is going under development phase and quality control comes under uh, once product is done, the testing part, it's, it's nothing but quality assurance. And this is handled by a tester this is handled by the software tester with the help of quality analyst with the help of you guys so this is brief about quality assurance and quality control now in the next slide let's talk about the difference the more difference between them so a couple of difference i can talk about it like this is process oriented quality assurance and quality control is product focused it is mainly focused on the product and this is mainly focused on process and this is preventive technique quality assurance is preventive technique preventive technique and quality control is corrective corrective what do you mean by that so preventive is it prevents the defect and it corrects the defect so in the next slide let's talk about more about uh, the difference between quality assurance and quality control so qa is the process of managing the quality managing for the quality so that is quality which we have discussed quality control is used to verify the quality of the product quality of the product qa aims to prevent the defect this is what we have discussed and qc aims to identify and fix the defects so in testing what we do we raise the defects and get it fixed from development team so qc aims to identify and fix the defect it is method to manage the quality verification it is method to verify the quality validation which i have uh, spoken about in the last video one part is called one part of v model one side of the v model is called verification and other part is other part is validation so the left side is called verification and right side is validation so here this is quality assurance and this is quality control it is preventive technique it prevents the defect it is corrective technique it is process to create the deliverables it is process to create the deliverables means our qa guys will help us to prepare all the templates which i have discussed earlier like test case summary template test case document or test case template test plan defect defect report defect summary report all these documents are prepared by qa guys so it prepares the deliverables it is the process to create the deliverables it is the pro process to verify the deliverables so we used to prepare all these documents and will verify right whether uh, uh, it is working correctly or not i mean uh, when we write the test cases so we verify all those deliverables and qa is part of sdlc mainly it's part of software development life cycle and qc under software testing life, life cycle involvement of whole team and here testing team 
generally qa also involved here like quality assur uh, assurance people quality analyst perform before qc and it performs after qa so this part anyway this is software development life cycle sdlc so this will happen first and this is afterwards once product is ready then software testing life cycle so yeah this is all about qa and qc guys and uh, uh, there is another term called quality engineering qe probably we'll discuss more about quality engineering later on so in case if you have any questions then please let me know so thank you guys for watching have a nice day bye bye hello friends welcome back to another video of automation testing insider so today i'm going to talk about the difference between system testing and integration testing so basically we do perform system testing and integration testing on integrated system but we need to understand like what is the exact difference between system testing and integration testing so let's get started so what is system testing so when we check the behavior of all the modules behavior of all the modules as a whole correct when we check all the modules as a whole system then we uh, perform system testing so that is the when we check the behavior of all the modules as a single unit correct so that is nothing but the system testing and what what we check in integration testing interfaces between the modules interfaces between the modules so that is system testing what is the second point what is the second difference okay so here what kind of technique we use uh before that uh, what are the testing we perform here we perform functional and non-functional functional and non-functional and here we perform functional only so what is the difference between functional and non-functional here in functional we do uh, the ui testing and uh, input domain testing and database testing so these are comes under functional testing whereas in non-functional testing we do check performance uh, security memory leakage so these are all comes under non-functional testing so what is the third difference guys we perform system testing after integration after integration testing and we do perform integration after after unit testing So we have already spoken about unit testing, integration testing, system testing, and acceptance testing. So these are the level guys, these are the different levels in software testing, unit testing, integration testing, system testing, and acceptance testing. Now fourth point is which technique we use. So we use black box, black box technique, and here we use black box plus black box plus white box so black box means uh, we uh, we don't care about the internal structure of the uh, system we check mainly the functionality now uh, what is the fifth point fifth difference so here we create the real time scenarios here we'll test with uh, try to create the real time scenarios or you can say created created to in, imitate real real time or real life scenarios and here we try to simulate 
simulate to simulate interaction interactions between modules between modules uh, what is six point guys six the difference uh, this is performed system testing is performed by testers and here integration testing is performed by testers as well as developer in some companies because we need to check the interfaces between modules so that's why uh, some typical scenarios we need developer uh, involvement as well so these are the different uh, uh, points which we talked about the difference between system testing and integration testing so guys if you still have some doubts then please let me know uh, write your question on the comment box of this video thank you so much for watching this video have a nice day bye bye hello friends welcome back to another video of automation testing insider so today i'm going to talk about the difference between agile model and v model so guys already i have covered about different software models so i have provided the link in the description box of this video the complete playlist of software development models so if you haven't watched those videos then i would recommend first go through and watch those videos and then please come back to this video so let's get started with the difference between agile model and v model so what is the first point guys what is the first difference so agile is iterative model iterative model whereas v model is not a iterative model why i call uh, called uh, agile as iterative model because it based on sprints so let's say we are developing sprints sprint one and what we'll do here in sprint one will follow these certain software development process like requirement design coding testing and release and maintenance so five phases will apply on this sprint one and once it is developed will develop sprint two so and so on will develop uh, till we get the final product or final build so this is how we follow in agile methodology like it's it is based on sprints and so we are following a certain process in each sprint correct so like software development life cycle the five phases of software development life cycle so that's why we keep repeating those phases so that's why it is called iterative iterative means when we perform same task again and again so that means iterative what is the second point or second difference between agile and waterfall so this is incremental incremental model guys and v model is not a incremental model so why agile is incremental because since it is based on a sprint so we'll keep adding on sprints till we get the final build so each sprint has certain requirements from the customer so this uh, this sprint has certain requirements because customer changing their requirements frequently and they that's the reason they go for this agile methodology and here we are following uh, agile uh, sprint cycle to develop the software so this uh, sprint one has certain uh, requirements sprint two has certain requirements so we keep adding on the requirements correct guys we keep adding on the requirements so that's why it is incremental our software is getting developed in incremental in incremental uh, fashion so that's the reason it is called incremental model what is the third difference it consists of sprints it consists of sprints which we talked about sprints and here it consists of verification and validation verification and validation so this is v model guys so left side is verification and this is validation this is also called development cycle and this is testing cycle 
testing levels and this is the developers life cycle and this is testers life cycle so we have verification and validation so we have two main phases over here verification and validation here it is based on sprints and what are the different phases guys if you talk about agile methodology so five phases which we have discussed earlier five phases in agile methodology here we have how many phases five phases in verification and five phases in validation so five phases in agile methodology what are those like we have requirement analysis design coding testing release and maintenance so these are the five phases release plus maintenance is one phase so we have five phases in agile methodology in each in each sprint and here in verification and validation each side we have five phases so, uh, so verification side we have uh, requirement analysis then uh, designing we can divide in two parts we have high level design low level design and then we have coding and then release so these are the five phases and the testing side we have different test levels we have unit test level and then we do perform functional testing as well so functional testing is one level and then we have integration system and acceptance level so five phases in verification and validation what is the fifth difference between agile and the model guys so here we can say testing testing and development are concurrent concurrent and uh, here we can say it is not concurrent concurrent because here you can see testing and development because uh, when developer start develop development of uh, sprint one will start testing this as well at the same time and once it is finished we'll uh, complete this testing and we'll start planning for sprint two and similarly developer will start developing the second module or second sprint so once we finish this one we'll start third uh, second module and developer will start third so concurrently testing and development are keeps going on so that is in agile methodology here what we'll do we cannot start the uh, testing until unless the product is finished so first we'll follow however we'll start our uh, uh, testing phase along with the development like we'll prepare the acceptance test plan uh, for each level we start the uh, will uh, planning will start when we start the development for the testing phase as well but will start the actual testing once software is developed at this level once coding is done they will release the software to the testing team and then we'll start the testing we'll execute all our test cases one by one like unit level and then integration for that functional integration sorry integration and then functional and then we have system and then UAT so this is how it it is going in V model what is the sixth different way so I would say testing is easy in agile methodology here little bit difficult why it is easy because we are keep interacting with the development team uh, and BA team and the customers so we are in uh, sync particular uh, proper sync with the sprint cycle here it is difficult because it takes a lot of uh, documentation and, and it take it's time consuming guys so that's why it is little bit difficult to uh, do the testing and it it is kind of uh, v-shape correct so until unless product is uh, not developed we cannot start the testing phase so testing is and there is no uh, communication like agile methodology in v model so that's why testing is difficult in v model so seventh point we can say seventh difference testers testers and developers are dependent on each other dependent on each other here independent here tester and developers are independent because both the phases are different guys so we are not uh, we are not dependent on tester 
so these are the differences between agile model and v model guys so hope you like it and please share this video thank you for watching have a nice day bye bye so guys if you are new to my channel then please subscribe it and click the bell icon to get the notification for upcoming videos thank you hello friends welcome back to another video of automation testing insider so today i'm gonna talk about what we mean by smoke testing what is sanity testing and what is the difference between them so this is an important interview question guys so many people are getting confused like what do you mean by smoke what is sanity testing and what is the difference so today we'll discuss more on smoke testing sanity testing why do we do smoke why do we do sanity and what is the difference between them so before i start from the next slide more about smoke sanity testing let me just give you an example guys so that you can understand better real world example so that you can understand better and relate better and understand what you mean by smoke testing and what is sanity testing so please concentrate on this example so that uh, you can easily understand what you mean by smoke and sanity testing so take an example we are working for tv manufacturing company and right now we are developing a new model of the tv we are manufacturing a new model of the tv and let's say 25 percent of the manufacturing or 25 uh, percent of the features we have implemented for this particular model now before we go for the further development like 75 percent are remaining so before i before we go for the further development we'll ask the tester to test those new features uh, those 25 features which we have implemented so we'll send this to the testing team to test this uh, these 25% uh, of the features so they have set up test cases for those 25 features guys the testers have uh, test cases for those 25 features of the uh, features they have written some test cases now before they go for the testing of those new features those 25% uh, uh, of the features what they're gonna do they will test the critical functionality of this tv first because this is under development like uh, build is not stable so they will go for critical functionality testing first the high level testing they will do they will perform first so what they're going to do they will plug in the cable uh, sorry the power cable of the tv and they will switch it on and they will make sure that uh, tv is getting switched on properly or not after switching it on now another uh, uh, high level functionality should be like uh, whether uh, after switching it on whether the screen is coming properly or not so we cannot expect like uh, because since 25% uh, features are implemented but still we uh, will test some critical functionality another could be we will uh, with if the remote features have been implemented so we will test with the help of remote as well whether we are able to switch on the tv or not with the help of remote so these are some some of the test cases uh, as part of critical functionalities guys we will execute so this is nothing but the smoke test now just assume that in case while plugging the power cable of the tv and when we switch it on if something comes if those test cases are passed those critical functionalities then that's fine like we can go ahead and test those 25 percent feature which we have already written the test cases correct we can execute easily those 25 percent of the test cases but just imagine in case if while testing the critical function functionality let's say we have plug in the power cable and we we'll switch on the tv and let's say some smoke is coming out of the tv so what happens we will verify uh, definitely that we will not get uh, i mean we will just stop it and we will re revert this build to the development team because some smoke is coming out of the tv when we switch on the tv so this build is not sufficient to go ahead for the further testing so this is smoke testing guys so hope it is clear like uh, this is this this is performed on unstable build mostly unstable build to verify the critical functionalities are working as expected or not critical functionalities testing at high level 
or we can do high level testing on the critical functionalities and we perform on unstable field now take an example of uh, so this is smoke testing now i'll give the same example guys uh, with the help of same uh, tv let's say we have implemented 100 percent of the features and this tv is rolled out into the market and some user have already bought this and let's say one user reported that his screen is not working as as expected like uh, a screen is not coming when we switch on the tv so that is the issue that one user has reported now it comes to the since it is in warranty period so it comes to the customer service now they will do the bug fixes for this uh, particular issue so what we'll do so what we're going to do before we do the further regression testing or we do the complete testing of this tv what we're going to do is we'll quickly check whether that bug fix is working fine or not and uh, we'll test the related functionalities as well related functionalities of the tv like uh, after switching it on whether the screen is coming properly or not and then color and voice is coming properly or not so these are the these are some test cases we will execute as part of our testing so this is nothing but sanity testing guys sanity testing so we will do we will execute some uh, like if new features have been implemented or any bug fixes are done then we go for the uh, quick testing or quick testing for the bug fixes or new functionalities and related testing will perform so that is nothing but the sanity testing and sanity testing is the part of or you can say subset of it is subset of regression testing guys regression testing and this is done mostly on stable build stable build so since we are doing the bug fixes quickly checking the bug fixes whether they are working on fine or not and related functionality so that's why it is called subset of regression test cases and smoke tests are called subset of subset of acceptance test cases acceptance test cases because uh, because this build is under development and this uh, smoke testing mainly perform performs on unstable build so we cannot go ahead with the further testing so we will reject this build correct so this is kind of rejection correct we cannot accept if everything is working fine like radical functionality then we can accept this build and we can go for the further testing of those 25 features which are implemented but but in case if smoke is coming out like if the critical functionalities are not working then we can reject this build reject this build and revert it to the development team so the same same things happen in software testing also guys uh, smoke testing and sanity testing and smoke testing are scripted mainly scripted because these are the part of uh, acceptance test cases like it is subset uh, we will retrieve some of the test cases from uh, acceptance test test plan uh, acceptance test cases and mostly it is automated or you can say scripted and sanity tests are not automated or scripted so we'll randomly check some quick functionality check and we will do some related testing so this is about smoke and sanity uh, sanity testing guys hope it is clear so from the next slide let's talk more about smoke and sanity We'll discuss some theoretical stuff about smoke and ten sanity testing, guys. So, a smoke test is also known as build verification, which we have discussed, and uh, or build acceptance testing. A smoke testing is prelim prelim preliminary check of the software after build and before a release, and uh, it is type of acceptance testing, guys, and provide an initial check that a new software build and its critical functionality are stable or not. So that is the main purpose of smoke testing. Smoke testing is group of tests that are executed to verify if critical functionalities of particular build are working fine as expected or not. So these are all points are related to smoke testing. You can just go through it and understand what you mean by smoke testing. How do we do smoke testing? So the development team deploys the build in QA. We will need to perform 
setup steps then the subset of test cases are taken which we have discussed because it is part of a subset of acceptance test cases and then testers run these uh, test cases on the build the QA team tests the application against the critical functionalities these series of test cases are designed to expose errors that are in the build after the smoke test we will need to clean up this might include stopping a server so this is kind of uh, best practices as part of smoke testing deleting files or emptying database tables this could also be done before the initial setup to ensure that the environment is clean before any test are test are started so this is what uh, about smoke testing guys the question comes like why we perform smoke testing so smoke testing is done whenever the new functionalities of the software are developed and integrated with the existing application new functionalities means let's say if it is under development and uh, we have given the i have given an example of 25 percent of the features have been implemented the tv example so this is when uh, the reason we, we go for smoke testing when the build is unstable it ensures that the all critical functionalities are working correctly it reveals simple failures but severe enough to reject a prospective software release it helps to find issues in the early phase of testing so this is an example of smoke testing guys if we talk about in our software testing so a web page of insurance we have insurance website uh, add a claim status page so we have a claim status page the tester would apply smoke test to verify that the existing builds work on fundamental level such as user can log in or not and then navigate to claim status page or not and retrieve the status report of a specific claim without the app crashing so we will uh, log in into the application we'll make sure that we are able to log in the application and we are able to go to that claim status page whether we are able to retrieve the status report or not so that is part of smoke testing now let's talk about sanity testing so sanity testing is subset of regression testing which we have discussed at the beginning of this video after receiving the software build sanity testing is the first test to ensure that the code changes introduced are working as expected this is also we have uh, spoken about when i have talked about the tv example if any defect is found in test we can reject the build and stop the testing after sanity test complete the status either pass or fail has to be reported to the developers the test is conducted for few very uh, for very short period of time let's say 15 to 30 minutes how to do sanity testing so unlike other types of testing sanity does not need a handful of techniques so since this is unscripted so we do kind of speedy and quick test we do not need to write test cases for sanity testing because you want to perform quick and speedy testing right the first thing in sanity testing is to identify new functionalities changes or any bug fixes whether they are working fine or not at very uh, initial level not we 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 won't go to the deep level then we will check the newly implemented changes if they are working fine or not and at last we will randomly check a few related functionalities to see if they are also working as expected or not if all good then release can be passed for further testing or if anyone any one functionality is not working as per requirement or got failed we can reject the build and stop the testing so why we go for uh, why we perform sanity testing so it is known as surface level testing as well just remember this name guys surface level testing as well this must be done to quickly evaluate quality of regressions made to the software surface level means we just do kind of basic test we execute quickly and speedy uh, perform the speedy testing or quality of regression made to the software regressions sanity is done to determine if new module additions to an existing software build are stable enough to pass to the next level testing or not if sanity test is passed we can continue further testing if it is failed we can reject the build and stop the testing so developers and fix the developer fix the changes as soon as possible so what is the example of sanity testing so here i have given an example as well so a web page for loan provider returns a 404 error for personal loan page 
So in loan uh, application, we have a personal loan page where we got 404. The developer fix the issue and submit the build for testing. The QA professional performs a sanity test to determine whether the basic functionality and navigation navigation for that specific page is working as intended or not. So that is the main purpose of sanity testing. Now let's talk about the difference between smoke and sanity testing guys. So smoke testing is performed on a certain that the critical functionalities of the program are working fine. Sanity testing is done at random to verify that each functionality is working as expected because this is unscripted. So we'll do random testing and uh, make sure that uh, the functionalities are working fine or not. Smoke testing is usually documented and scripted. Sanity testing is not documented and it is not scripted. And it's unscripted. Smoke testing has a goal to verify stability. Whereas sanity testing has a goal to verify a rationality or you can say the quality of the software. Testing is done by both developers and testers. So sometimes it is performed by developer as well. So sanity testing is done only by testers. And this is done by both developers and testers. Smoke testing is subset of acceptance testing guys, which we have discussed. Uh, sanity testing is subset of regression testing. Testing is wide and high level testing. Testing is wide and shallow testing. It is well elaborate and planned testing. This is not a planned test and is done only when there is a shortage of time. Smoke testing exercises the entire system from end to end. Sanity testing exercises only the particular component of the entire system. So here we do the entire system, the critical functionalities of the entire system and here Sanity testing exercises only the particular component of the entire system where the new features is implemented or bug fixes are done and related functionalities. So that is part of sanity. So these are the difference between uh, smoke and sanity guys and hope you like this video, share it. And if you have still, if you have some doubts, then please write on the comment box. I will reply as soon as possible. So thank you guys for watching. Have a nice day. Bye bye. Hello friends, welcome back to another video of Automation Testing Insider. So today I'm going to talk about the categories of functional testing. So we have two types, we have positive testing and we have negative testing. So let's talk about what do you mean by positive testing, what is negative testing when we, and we will see the difference between them. So what exactly positive and negative testing guys? So let me just explain you with the help of an example so that you can relate better, you can understand better about what do you mean by positive testing and negative testing. So let's say we are testing an application which or which when we perform with valid operations, valid conditions, when we test this application with valid conditions and valid values, valid values. So this is nothing but the positive testing guys in simple words. And when we perform with invalid, invalid conditions, and invalid values this is nothing but negative test cases or negative testing so i'll uh, talk more about like what you mean by valid conditions and valid values invalid conditions invalid values when i provide the examples so this is a simple definition of positive and negative testing now let me give you an example so that you can understand better so let's say we are testing a login screen of a web page login screen so it will take username it has username password and submit button now let's say as per the requirement the developer develop this username field which takes alphanumeric values alphanumeric values and it takes at the rate as well because we can provide the username uh, email id as username so it will take alphanumeric values plus at the rate uh, as a special symbol now, what are the positive test cases for this input field, right? This username field. So when we enter one, two, one, three, four, five, six. So these are the positive test cases. When we provide A, B, C, D. So this is positive test cases. When we provide X, X, Y, Z at the rate, X, Y, Z at the rate, one, two, three, four. 
so this is also positive test cases for this input field now this won't take another specific character like hash when we include like, like let's say abc hash 3 2 1 so this is kind of negative test scenario or negative test cases for this particular field username field so this is positive negative testing guys now let me give another example let's say we have a field a phone number field cell phone number field now this should take 10 digits right now if you provide 10 digits so that means it is positive test test cases right positive test cases now if you provide like 11 digit ideally it should not take 11 digits because this is a cell phone number so this is negative test cases ne negative test case now if you provide let's say we have if you provide like some num uh, some characters over here like a b c d x y z or something so this is again negative test cases for this one negative test case for this cell phone number because ideally it should not take alphanumeric values it should take only numeric val values that should be like 10 digits only now so this is kind of examples of positive and negative testing guys now let me just explain one more example so that you can understand better so let's say we are working uh, for this application let's say this is loan application now we have two types of products over here we have one is uh, let's say personal loan personal loan and this is home loan home loan right now the interest interest rate uh, for take an example for personal loan it is like let's say 12 percent and for home loan let's say it is eight percent now company has uh, imposed new interest rates on personal loan let's say they have increased the personal loan from 12 to 14 14 percent now when we test this application guys so when we create the personal loan as part of testing of this uh, loan process uh, system right so when we test this personal loan we'll make sure that 14 percent is imposed on personal loans when we test this application and at the same time we will test after testing this personal uh, loan we should also test the home loan as well later on for negative testing for negative testing so that this 14 percent should not apply over here because there is no change on this home loan interest rate so this is kind of uh, valid condition so this is valid condition guys so which we have spoken about at the beginning valid condition and this is invalid condition invalid condition when we test for home loan because changes are applied to this personal loan only and it should not impact the home loan so that is negative scenario so these are the examples of positive and negative testing guys so yeah so let me just take you to the next slide from where we'll discuss now another thing like a couple of techniques we can use when we test positive and negative testing let's say we have a couple of techniques like boundary value analysis and we have equivalence class partitioning however i will discuss more uh, in a separate video about the boundary value analysis and equivalence uh, class partitioning guys so let me just give an example so that uh, because we apply boundary values and uh, equivalence class partitioning as part of this positive negative test testing when we drive the test cases now these are the test design techniques so using this we drive the test cases now let's say any input field taking number from 0 to 10 so what are the boundary values here so we have minus 1 we have 0 and 1 plus 1 and here we have 9 10 and 11 so these are the values at boundary correct these are the values at boundary two points we have this starting point and this is the end point boundary values so minus 1 0 and 1 is, are the values here and 9 10 11 so what are the negative scenarios here so minus 1 is the negative scenario negative test case and here 11 is the negative test case it should not take minus 1 or 11 and 0 and 1 are the positive test cases and 9 and 10 here are positive test cases so this is about boundary value analysis guys which we apply when we test positive when we do positive and negative testing now let's say equivalence class partitioning so i'll take the same example like 0 and 10 it is this, this is the starting point and this is the end 0 and 10 
now let's say we have divided that into four parts so we have we have minus 10 we have minus 5 we have 0 and 10 or minus 10 minus 5 0 and 10 now we will test from these partitions so we have divided into four parts so let's say if we test like here minus 6 and when we test one value from here let's say minus 2 and when we test some values here 7 7 so this is positive test case these two are negative minus 6 and minus 2 are negative test cases here sorry this is three partition right this is first and this is second and here you can divide 0 to 5 and 5 to 10 so i'll take one value from here 5 to 10 1 and 0 to 5 i'll take 3 so 3 and 7 will be the positive test cases whereas minus 6 and minus 2 are negative test test cases as part of this equivalence class partitioning guys however we'll discuss more uh, as i have discussed uh, like uh, as i have spoken about uh, boundary values and equivalence class partitioning we'll discuss in a separate video about those case design techniques so let's talk more about uh, positive and negative testing so what exactly positive testing as we have discussed positive testing is type of testing which is performed on a software application by providing the valid data as an input guys this is what we have spoken about valid data as an input so when we provide the valid data for any input so that is nothing but the positive testing we are performing for that application for that input field let's recap some more points Positive testing is a type of software testing that is performed by assuming everything will be as expected. So since we are providing the valid data, so we can expect the expected outcome. Correct. We can expect the assume that we can expect the positive outcomes. It is performed with the assumption that only valid and relevant things will occur as part of this positive testing. In this type testing performed within the boundaries and this testing checks the product application is behaving as per the specification document with the valid set of test data so this is what we have discussed guys as per the boundary values 0 to 10 0 to 10 so when we test for 1 or when we test for 9 these are within the limits so that is what we do as part of this positive testing what is negative testing so negative testing is a method of testing an application or system that ensures that the plot of the application is according to the requirements according to the requirements means the positive testing and can handle the unwanted input unwanted input and user behavior so unwanted input is uh, invalid values and user behavior is nothing but the invalid conditions it is also known as error path testing or failure testing and it helps us to identify more bugs and enhance the quality of the software application under test so it is very important guys to perform negative testing so because uh, our intention as a tester should be to break the system like when we test the application so we should think about all the permutation and combination when we test any application so that's so that kind of thought we should have so negative testing is very very important so negative testing uses invalid input data or undesired user behaviors to check for unexpected system errors so it's not about when we provide the values it should also test we should also test for undesired user behavior which we have discussed uh, when i have uh, given the example of loan application so we should also see the negative behaviors like what would be the negative scenarios for any particular application we can say that the negative testing is executing by keeping the negative point of view in simple terms now let's talk about what are the differences between positive and negative testing guys so positive testing means testing the application or system with valid data negative testing means testing the application or system with invalid data it is always done to verify the known set of test conditions it is always done to break the project or product with unknown set of test conditions it ensures software is normal it ensures 100 percent defect free software so this negative testing means we'll check the quality of the software 
so that it it takes all the positive negative scenarios like this application is capable enough to handle all kind of scenarios so that is the main intention when we do negative testing it doesn't cover all possible cases so since we are testing within the limits so that's why it, it does not cover all possible cases it covers all possible cases and scenarios when we do negative testing guys so it can be performed by people having less knowledge it can be performed by, by professionals why uh, i have mentioned like having less knowledge positive testing because whenever we test the application so let's say we are testing any application any application and user will provide some documentation right we'll get some documentation for the project like uh, customer requirement specification or business requirement so they will provide like what should be the expected uh, uh, like what are the input values and what should be the expected behavior so normal tester will simply test the positive test scenarios or positive test cases they will think about the positive uh, scenarios and write the positive test cases only but we should consider the negative test cases ne negative impact of the application like when we provide the invalid data or when i perform the invalid operations or when i do negative uh, kind of when when i derive the negative test scenarios how the system will behave when I provide the negative test conditions, how the system will behave. So that is what uh, what should be the expected error. So we should always think about the negative testing perspective. Positive testing is implemented only for the expected conditions. Negative testing is implemented only for unexpected conditions. It is less important as compared to negative testing. So this is uh, I have spoken about guys. So it is more important as compared to positive testing. Positive testing can be implemented on every application. Negative testing can be implemented when the possibilities of unpredicted conditions. So we cannot apply always negative testing in every applications or every situation. So there are certain things we when we go for negative testing. So this is all for today guys uh, about positive and negative testing. So if you have some questions or anything, uh, if you have any doubts, then please write in the comment box and uh, please like this video, share it. And uh, yeah, if you are new to my channel, then please subscribe it and click the bell icon to get the notification for upcoming interesting videos. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. Bye bye. Hello friends, welcome back to another video of Automation Testing Insider. So today I'm going to talk about what even by ad hoc testing, why we perform ad hoc testing, what are the advantages and disadvantages of ad hoc testing. And at last we'll talk about what is the difference between ad hoc testing and exploratory testing. So let's get started. So when we test any application guys, so when we test any application without, without planning, without any proper planning or documentation without documentation that is nothing but ad hoc testing and since we don't create any plan or we don't go for any documentation so this is also called ad hoc testing is also called informal testing informal testing or you can say unstructured type of software testing and in ad hoc testing we should have to perform ad hoc testing we should have some knowledge about the application guys we should have prior knowledge about the application then only we can do ad hoc testing so what happens in ad hoc testing is let's say we have different functionalities in our application we have different components in our application so randomly we'll check the functionalities of those components so that is kind of ad hoc testing so when we perform ad hoc testing so generally after once we execute the formal test cases when we done the formal testing let's say we have executed some test cases about the application and still if we left some time in testing then we'll go for ad hoc testing to learn more about the about the application so this is the reason we perform ad hoc testing to uncover some some of the important defects in application then we go for ad hoc testing now you might have question like what is the difference between ad hoc testing and exploratory testing so we have seen uh, in previous videos we already spoken about exploratory testing so what happens guys as part of exploratory testing we'll explore the application 
so we don't have any knowledge about the application we will just explore as part of exploratory testing and we'll create some kind of test plan what needs to be executed as part of exploratory testing some kind of plan and then we'll learn the application on the application so this is uh, these all processes are simultaneous in nature right simultaneously we'll explore the application we'll create some documentation for exploratory testing like what needs to be uh, tested and we'll learn the application simultaneously so that is exploratory testing but here in what happens in ad hoc testing is we should have prior knowledge about the application here we'll explore the application and learn the application as part of as part of exploratory testing exploratory testing so this is the basic difference between ad hoc testing and exploratory testing guys we'll talk more about more differences about ad hoc testing and exploratory testing coming slides so let's move on to the next slide guys where we'll discuss some definition about the ad hoc testing and we'll see why we perform ad hoc testing and advantages and disadvantages and at last we'll talk about the difference between ad hoc testing and exploratory testing So when a software testing is performed without proper planning so this is what we have discussed and documentation without proper planning and documentation it is said to be ad hoc testing ad hoc testing is an informal or unstructured software testing type that aims to break the testing process in order to find possible defects so that is the main aim of our, uh, of the ad hoc testing ad hoc testing is performed without a plan of action or and any actions taken are not typically documented ad hoc testing implies learning of the software before its testing ad hoc testing is done by executing the random scenarios which we have spoken about and it is form of negative testing which ensures the perfection of the testing so these are all points about the ad hoc testing guys now question comes like why we go for ad hoc testing why do we do ad hoc testing so the main aim of ad hoc testing is to find any defects through random checking randomly we'll verify the application and try to find out some defects this can uncover many very specific and interesting defects which are easily missed when we when we use when using other methods when we perform the formal testing approach when we uh, miss some of the defects then that can be uncovered as part of ad hoc testing ad hoc testing usually performed after the formal test execution so this is what we have discussed ad hoc testing will be effective only if the tester has in-depth understanding about the system under test so what we have spoken about you should have knowledge about the application then you can perform ad hoc testing whereas in exploratory testing we should uh, not mandatory to know about the application we'll just explore the application as part of exploratory testing what are the advantages and disadvantages of ad hoc testing so let's talk about advantages first so this method is very simple and can be performed without any training it can be used when time period is limited this can uncover very specific and interesting defects which are easily missed when using other methods about this point it can be used when time period is limited let's say we have very limited time period to go about the production we have already executed the formal testing now we have some time left for testing then we can go for about the go for the ad hoc testing to uncover some of the defects which are missed during the formal testing approach this testing can be performed anytime during software development life cycle process so this can also be performed at any time in software development lifecycle process guys what are the disadvantages so this method is not recommended when more scientific methods are available the actual testing process is not document since it does not follow a particular test case it is difficult for the test to regenerate an error in ad hoc testing so these are the some kind of disadvantages about the ad hoc testing now let's talk about what is the difference between exploratory testing and ad hoc testing guys 
so ad hoc testing implies learning of the software before its testing exploratory testing you learn and test the software some simultaneously i have discussed documentation is not a basic need of this type of testing the qa team always attains the testing without a specific documentation and documentation is mandatory here some kind of documentation will create as part of exploratory testing to assure that quality is and necessary to documents the detail of this testing ad hoc testing is about the perfection of the testing and exploratory testing is more about the learning of the application so here we'll make sure that we cover all kind of test cases as part of ad hoc testing like we test all kind of functionalities in any application so this is kind of perfection of the testing when we perform ad hoc testing this is more about the learning of the application because we don't have any knowledge about the application as part of exploratory testing ad hoc testing helps to find innovative ideas from the research it helps to develop the application to get more ideas about the application ad hoc testing is technique of testing an application that these provides a significant role in the software production this is an approach of testing that combines the learning test results and creates a new solution it mostly works on the business concern and increases the knowledge about the application perform ad hoc testing different scenarios when we test as part of ad hoc testing it categorizes the problems and compare them from the problems found in the past this helps to reduce the time consumption ad hoc testing is not important to execute by an expert software testing and this is always needed to be done by expert it works on negative testing mostly and this testing works on positive testing needs it does not work with the workflow exploratory testing works with the workflow from beginning of the testing it starts with primary objectives and collects proper information about them so basically when we perform ad hoc testing so randomly we will check the application right so but in as part of as part of exploratory testing we learn the application so that is kind of step by step process however we will do some kind of random testing as part of exploratory testing as well by exploring the application we'll just learn the workflow right so this is all about today guys so about ad hoc testing what do you mean by ad hoc testing and the difference between ad hoc testing and exploratory testing so thank you for watching have a nice day bye bye hello friends welcome back to another video of automation testing insider so today i'm going to talk about what do you mean by retesting why we perform retesting and we'll talk about regression testing and we'll also talk about what are the advantages and disadvantages of retesting and regression testing and at last we'll talk about what the difference between regression testing and retesting and so this is an important interview question guys and important topic so please con concentrate more on this topic so let's talk about retesting first what do you mean by retesting so to test something again is called retesting in simple words or if you talk about the definition so testing the same functionality with different combination of input data is called retesting so let's understand with the help of an example guys so let's say this is our application let's say this is e-commerce application and here we have different modules guys this is module a this is module b this is module c and this is module d now in this particular module A, we have different features. Let's say user registration, we have login and some other features as well. And we have written some test cases for user registration. We have written some test cases for login page and we have written some test cases for some other features. So these are the complete set of test cases for module A. Now take an example while executing the user registration test cases, we got the defect. We are not able to register the user. So what we will do, we will raise the defect to the development team and after the fix after the fix we will re-execute our test cases for this user registration page so that is nothing but we are doing the retesting we are re-executing our test cases so that is retesting guys so to make sure 
that defect is working fine for that particular page that user registration page so this is retesting right so sometimes we perform with different set of uh, test data uh, we will re-execute with different set of test data to make sure that defect is perfectly fine or not so that is retesting now there are two ways we can perform retesting so here you can see we have re-executed our test cases for the user registration page so since we have login page as well so we got the issue in user registration while registering the user so we'll make sure that user is able to log in, in into the functionality or not so we will test the login functionality as well so sometimes we do on that particular feature will re-execute the test cases for particular feature and sometimes will re-execute the test cases for entire module in retesting so that is retesting guys so this is all about retesting now let's talk about what you mean by regression testing let me take another example so here we have another application here we have module a module b module c module d and module module e now what happens in regression testing so let's say we got issue in this module c we got some issue and it is fixed by the development team and we re-execute our test cases so that is retesting on this particular module c but this module c is dependent on some other module let's say c is dependent on b a is dependent on c C is dependent on D and D is dependent on E. So module C is dependent on some other modules or some other modules are dependent on C. So what happens is as part of regression testing, since we got the issue here, so we will make sure that other part of the application does not get impacted because of this change. So this is not about just get got the issue in module C. Sometimes what happens is if some features has been added, some feature has been added in this module C. In that case also we need to make sure the other part of the application does not get impacted. So other related functionality. So that is nothing but re regression testing guys. So in regression testing we have certain suite of test cases we have to execute on on which which combine uh, which which is the combination of all the modules so we have suite of test cases which combine the test cases from the subset of test cases from all the modules all the interrelated modules so we will execute all those test cases to make sure all the features all the other features or unchanged features are working fine or not so this is regression testing so let's move on to the next slide guys where we will talk more about uh, retesting we will recap what we have discussed so far and we'll discuss like why we perform retesting regression testing and difference between them advantages and disadvantages also we will talk about let's get started so testing the same functionality with different combination of input data so this is what we have discussed different combination of input data is called retesting retesting essentially means to test something again in simple words in simple words retesting is the testing a specific bug after it was fixed retesting ensures that the issue has been fixed and it is working as expected so this is the main purpose of retesting to make to make sure that issue has been fixed and it is working as expected it is plant testing with proper steps of verification so when we get the fix then we have to re-execute our test cases so this is plant testing guys in some test cases some cases the entire module is required to be retested to ensure that quality of the module so this is what we have discussed right and i have given the example of retesting why and when we perform retesting so retesting is used when there is any specific error or bug which needs to be verified it is used when the bug is rejected by the developer so this is another example why we perform retesting then the testing department test whether the bug is actual or not so let's say this is the bug is rejected by the developer so again we have to re-execute our test cases with different set of combination different uh, 
combination of test data or we'll try to reproduce that defect whether that is for for that reason we have to re-execute our test cases make sure that is a actual defect it is also used to check the whole system to verify the final functionality it is used to test even the entire module or component in order to confirm the expected functionality called retesting advantages and disadvantages of regression uh, retesting so retesting ensures that the issue has been fixed and it is working as expected it improves the quality of the application or product it requires less time for verification because it's limited to the specific issue or any particular feature so since we have taken an example of user registration piece so it's very easy it's very easy to re-execute re the same set of test cases part of retesting if the tester has knowledge of the source code it becomes very easy to find out which type of data can help in testing the application effectively and there are some disadvantages so it requires new build for verification of the defect so until unless if you don't get the new build so you cannot re-execute our test cases once the testing is start, started then only the test cases of retesting can be obtained and not before that the test cases for retesting cannot be automated so just remember guys we cannot automate the uh, retesting right we can automate our regression suite now let's talk about regression testing what do you mean by regression testing if any changes are done in the existing build and this and this this is this test is conduct on the modified build to verify the changes are working correctly or not and because of these changes there are no side effects that is the main purpose of regression testing in regression test the change functionality plus dependent functionalities are tested the purpose of regression testing is to find any bugs which may get introduced accidentally because of new changes or modification this also ensures that the bug found earlier are not creatable. This helps in maintaining the quality of the product along with the new changes in the application. So why we go for regression testing? Any new feature is added to an existing feature. The code base is fixed to solve defects. Any bug is fixed and changes in configuration. So these are the different uh, reasons we go for regression testing any new feature is added which we have discussed code base is fixed to solve defects and any bug is fixed and changes in configuration code configuration right so these are the different reasons we for re regression testing advantages and disadvantages of regression testing guys it helps the team to identify the defects and eliminate them earlier in the software development life cycle. It ensures continuity of the business functions with any rapid change in the software. Regression testing can be done by using the automation tool. So generally we automate the functional test cases and regression test cases because in regression test cases, whenever there is a change or there is a deployment, we have to perform regression testing. For that reason, uh, we automate our regression suite. It helps us to make sure that any changes like bug fixes or any enhancements to the module or application have not impacted the existing tested code. That is main advantage of regression testing. What are the disadvantages? If regression testing is done without using automated tools, then it can be very tedious. Because whenever there is a, a deployment, we have to you know re-execute our, all our regression suite manually. So that is kind of very tedious process and time consuming. Because here we execute the same set of test cases again and again. That is regression testing. Regression testing has to be performed for every small change in the code, as even a small portion of code can create a software. It takes time to complete the test and this slows down the agile velocity. It expensive, it is expensive and the cost is hard to justify. So what is the difference between retesting and regression testing guys? 
So retesting is about fixing specific defects that you are already found. Regression testing is about searching for defects. Searching for defects in other modules, other related modules. So retesting is done only for failed test cases. Regression testing is performed for past test cases. Which we have seen, right? If particular module is fixed, then we have to just re-execute the test cases for that particular module and we have to execute our regression suite to make sure other related functionalities are not impacted. Retesting is used to ensure that the test cases which failed in last executions are fixed. Regression testing is to ensure that changes have not been affected the unchanged part of the product. Verification of bugs are included in the retesting. Verification of bugs are not included in the regression testing. Retesting is of high priority, so it's done before the regression testing. Regression testing can be done in parallel with retesting. Retesting the test cases cannot be automated, and here we can automate our regression test cases. In case of retesting, the testing is done in planned way. In case of regression testing, the testing style is generic. Test cases of retesting can be obtained only when the testing starts. Test cases of regression testing can be obtained from the specification document and bug reports. So what happens in regression testing whenever a particular module is deployed? So let's say we have certain features in module which are deployed, right? So we have already regression suite. So after the deployment, we will pick some of the test cases and we'll execute, we'll put in regression suite and we'll execute for the next deployment. That is how we do as part of regression testing. So this is all about retesting and regression testing guys. So if you have any questions, then put your comments, uh, uh, put your questions in the comment box and please like this video, share this. And uh, if you're new to my channel, then please subscribe it and click the bell icon to get such interesting videos videos thank you so much have a nice day bye bye hello guys welcome back to another video of automation testing insider so today i'm going to talk about what even my monkey testing and what is gorilla testing and what is the difference between monkey testing and gorilla testing so before i start this video guys so i'll let you know that uh, uh, i have started taking mock interviews so if you want to give your mock interview then uh, Please send out your resume on my email ID. So my email ID is hitendraverma22 at the red gmail.com. So I'll provide the uh, email ID uh, uh, in the description box of this video. So please send out your resume and book the slot for mock interviews. So let's get started with today's topic. So today we are going to discuss about uh, monkey testing and gorilla testing. So what do you mean by monkey testing? So monkey testing is a random testing guys. So there is no plan or there is uh, there are no test cases to execute monkey test so we can easily relate with monkey so that's why it is called monkey so you see the basic nature of monkey so it monkey jump jumps from one branch to another branch in a tree right so that's what uh, we can relate so monkey testing as part of monkey testing we do the random testing on any system when we perform random testing on any system so that is called monkey testing so random testing uh, the basic the basic purpose of monkey testing is to get the defect as much as possible or to break the system with the random inputs or uh, random testing so that is monkey testing and this is black box kind of testing guys black box testing and uh, it is part of system testing so we perform on integrated system monkey testing is used to perform on integrated system and we don't have any plans that I have discussed earlier without test cases we use to execute monkey test. Now if you talk, talk about gorilla test, so gorilla is rather than uh, rather uh, cool and calm than monkey. So it is basically focused on particular system, particular module, I would say, particular module. So this is part of unit testing. And uh, here we have certain plans to execute gorilla testing. And this is part of white box testing. 
so user should have understanding of the system internal architecture of the system and uh, coding that he or she can perform the gorilla testing so basically it is part of unit testing this is monkey testing is part of system testing and this is unit testing so let's talk about more uh, the differences between monkey and gorilla testing in coming slides the next slide so let's get it started so monkey testing is type of software testing which is performed based on some random inputs without any test cases and checks the behavior of the system and confirms whether it crashes or not so do not think that it is kind of load testing in load testing what happens is we have certain test data uh, prior to prior to perform load testing right but in monkey testing what happens is we'll perform random testing so our intention is to get uh, defects or by performing invalid operations or random testing to break the system so that is the purpose of monkey testing if we talk about gorilla testing so gorilla testing is type of software testing which is performed on a module based or some random inputs repeatedly so whenever we perform uh, so as i have discussed earlier so basically we perform on particular module the gorilla testing is performed on particular module repeatedly so we'll perform repeat repetitive test cases on same module and check the modules functionalities and confirms no works in the module in monkey testing no test cases is used to test the application as it is part of random testing it is performed repeatedly as it is part of manual testing and uh, the monkey testing is approach is primarily used in system testing and this gorilla testing approach is mainly used in unit testing which we have discussed at the beginning of this video monkey testing is implemented on a whole system because uh, this is part of system testing and gorilla testing is implemented on few selective components of the system no software knowledge is required in order to execute the monkey testing because we perform random testing on any application it requires minimum software knowledge in order to execute gorilla testing the main objective of monkey testing is to check whether system crashes or not the main objective of gorilla testing is to check whether the module is working properly or not so monkey testing is also known as random testing guys just remember these names random testing fudge testing or stochastic testing so these are the different names of monkey testing gorilla testing is also known as torture testing fault tolerance or frustrating testing because repeatedly we perform the testing on particular module so that's why it is called frustrating testing as well there are three types of monkey testing dumb monkey testing smart monkey testing and brilliant monkey testing while there is no such different types of gorilla testing available the implementation of monkey testing does not require any planning or preparation and the gorilla testing cannot implement without any preparation or planning so there should be certain plan or uh, uh, implementation test cases i mean some test cases should be there to perform gorilla testing so this is the difference between monkey testing and gorilla testing guys so if you have any doubts please let me know in the comment box and guys if you go to my blog that is automation testing insider.com just navigate to www.automationtestinginsider.com so if you navigate to this software testing so i keep all the notes related to manual testing here see like introduction to software testing complete software testing hierarchy software development life cycle all software development models so all the testing notes are here whatever i have uh, covered as part of uh, manual testing videos in my youtube channel so you can go through all the notes and uh, if you have any questions please note down your questions and put in the comment box so that i can reply you and uh, yeah we have other tabs as well like selenium automation tools java for selenium java questions and answer selenium questions and answer, um, and api testing this part is pending i'm going to cover uh, very soon so this is all for today guys so thank you for watching and please do not forget to send your resume
if you want to give your mock interviews. So I'll provide the email ID as I have discussed in the description box of this video. Thank you guys for watching. Have a nice day. Bye bye. Hello guys, welcome back to another video of Automation Testing Insider. So today I'm going to talk about an important topic that is defect priority and defect severity. And this is an important interview question as well guys. So in the last video I talked about what do you mean by defect, what is defect report, what is defect reporting and I have shown you the real time defect report template as well where we talked about what are the various fields in defect report template. So let me just recap what we have discussed so far. So whenever we test any application guys, so let's say this is my application under test. Whenever we test any application and if any functionality is not working as expected. So that means there is a defect in the application, right? If any functionality is not working as expected, so that is a defect. And that defect has to be reported to the development team to get it fixed by the developer, correct? So how we are going to assign it to the developer? How we are going to report it to the development team? So there are two ways which we have spoken about in the last video. So the first one is some of the companies are using Excel worksheet to report the defect, to raise the defect and report it to the development team. So we have various fields which represents the defect, correct? We have various fields in defect report template. And the second way is using bug tracking tool. Bug tracking tool. Using that, we can raise the defect and assign it to particular developer. So these are the two ways guys. And uh, we have spoken about various fields in defect report template. So we have ID of the defect. We have summary of the defect, the date on which we raise the defect, steps to reproduce, status of the defect. Similarly, we have two more columns. We have priority and severity. While raising the defect, we have to assign these two values as well. We have to give values of what is the priority of the defect and what is the severity of the defect. Correct. And the similar way while assigning the defect, while tracking the defect using bug tracking tool, while raising the defect, we have to give these two values as well. Priority and severity. And there are three ranges of values. Generally, we have high, medium and low for both priority and severity. So this is the topic for today guys. So basically what do you mean by priority? Whenever we, uh, you might have heard like high priority defect or high severity defect. So what do you mean by that, correct? Which we are going to discuss and we are going to, I'm going to give you different examples like high priority, high severity, low priority, low severity, medium priority, like that. So we are going to discuss about different examples as well. So let's talk about what do you mean by severity first. So basically severity defines the impact of the defect, like how severe the defect uh, and how it impactful right to the application, which we are going to test. Basically it talks about the seriousness of the defect, like how seriously it impacts to the application, correct? So that is nothing but the severity. And as we have discussed, we have three ranges, high, medium and low. If you say like high severity defect, so that means it has high impact on the application. If you say like high priority, so that means we cannot go further for testing. Like it has a lot of impact on the application, kind of a blocker issue, correct? So that's how we, we are going to assign like high, medium and low. Uh, low has low priority, which has low priority and medium has the medium priority, correct? as we uh, it indicates like high medium low if you talk about priority what do you mean by priority so basically priority indicates the importance of the defect like how soon the defect should get fixed how soon the defect should be fixed correct so again we have three ranges in priority high medium and low if you say like high priority so the impact of the defect might not be uh, uh, that serious uh, okay it might not be a serious issue if you see the functionality wise but the priority of the defect is very high and it could be like high severe bugs as well high severe defect as well so priority means if you assign like if you say like high priority defect so that defect should be fixed as early as possible similarly we have medium 
and low based on the priority so priority defines the basically it defines the timeline of to fix to fix the defect and severity def, uh, talks about the impact of the defect on the application now let's talk uh, more about priority and severity guys so let me just recap what we have discussed so far so severity defines how impactful a bug can be to the system it can values either high or medium or low it specifies the seriousness of the defect if you talk about priority so priority indicates how soon the work bug should be fixed it can values either high medium or low it specifies the importance of the defect which we have discussed guys or the functionality okay so the defect are fixed based on priorities so whenever we say like high priority defect so that should be fixed uh, earlier if you say like medium so it depends on like uh, how soon it should be fixed correct so we have three ranges for priority and severity now let's talk about the different examples of priority and severity guys so let me just draw a table so let's say here we have severity we have defect priority and here i'll give some examples so let's talk about high severity and high priority defect high high severity and high priority so what are the examples guys so let's say uh, we are not able to unable to log in into the application unable to log in so let's say we are testing a website and we are able to launch the url and while entering the username password and click on sign in button we are not able to get the home page we are not able to sign in, in into the application correct so that is an example of high priority why it is high priority because this is the importance of defect is very high correct this has to be fixed because this is kind of blocker issue we cannot move further so that's the reason we have assigned it to uh, high priority and high severity the impact is more correct the imp impact is lot because we are not able to log in into the application so we cannot test further so this is an example of high severity and high priority another example you can say high priority high severity is let's say while launching any website like launching any website and we we are getting 500 internal server error internal server error or 404 page not found page not found so these are the examples of high priority and high severity again why it is high priority high priority uh, high severity because the impact of the defect is very high because we cannot uh, launch the application itself because we are getting 500 internal server error or 404 page not found correct so severity is very high and why priority is very high because this this defect is very important to get it fixed as early as possible because until unless if it if it is not fixed then we cannot move further for testing correct so these are the example of high priority and high severity now let's talk about low severity and low priority defect guys so any spelling mistakes on the web page so let's say we have we have a website and at the end of the page end of the website or uh, uh, end of the page we have at bottom we have some misspelling mistakes so that could be that could be an example of that is an example of low priority because low priority means it is uh, the spelling mistakes at the end of the page right at last page and that too at the bottom of the page so that it does not have that much important importance correct and why it is low severity because it does not have any impact to the application there is no impact uh, if you see if you talk about the functionality wise correct so that that is an example of low priority and low severity any spelling mistake and let's say spelling mistake is on front page on maybe login page we have at bottom we have some spelling mistake so that could be an example of medium 
priority but still it will be low severity because it does not have any impact to the application guys so this is an example of low priority low severity and low priority and low severity and medium priority any ui defects also that could be an example of low severity any ui examples but priority may vary from low to high any ui defects now let's talk about medium medium severity and high priority so let's say uh, we are testing inbox of gmail page okay so we have we have different emails over here in inbox okay and at a time we are able to delete only one email we are able to delete one email at a time but while selecting all the emails we are not able to delete that so this is an example of medium severity why it is medium severity because we are able to test the delete functionality however we are able to delete only one email at a time so that's the reason it is medium severity but why high priority because we might need to delete all the emails together right all the emails at one time so that is an example of high so th that's the reason we have given as given assign it as high severity high priority defect correct so this is an example of medium severity and high priority now let's talk about low severity and high priority defect guys high priority so logo of the company logo of the company is incorrect if logo of the company is incorrect so that means that is high priority defect because logo represents the company so that is high priority defect low severity because it does not have any impact on the application another example could be for this like high priority low severity let's say logo is as per our expectation like as per uh, business requirement it should be at right side but developer uh, developed at left side okay so that is an another example because uh, as per the requirement it should be at right place so that is an example of high priority and low severity defect so these are the various examples of priority and severity guys so if you still if you are uh, not able to get it then please let me know through uh, your queries you can comment it in the comment box and like this video share it and if you if you're new to my channel then please subscribe this channel and click the bell icon to get the notification for upcoming videos thank you so much for watching and in the next video we are going to talk about defect life cycle so thank you guys for watching have a nice day bye bye hello friends welcome back to another video of automation test insider so today i'm going to talk about an important topic that is use keys so in this particular video i'm going to talk about what do you mean by use keys what is the what is the need of use keys what are the different types of use cases and at last we'll discuss about what is the difference between use case and test case so let's get started with the definition of use keys what do you mean by use keys so it describes the system behavior or system functionality as per end user or you can say end user perspective so use case is nothing but the uh, system behavior uh, how the system behaves as per the end user so basically it describes the system behavior as per end user perspective now the question arises here is why do we need use cases right so whenever we work on any project so whenever we get the project so what is the first criteria so the first thing is get the requirement from the client get the requirement from the client when whenever we start the project and the, those requirements will be converted into different business requirement documents L let's say we have business requirement document we have brs business requirement specification or frs so these are the different documents prepared by business users or business analyst right so we'll write down all the uh, requirements over here now the use cases will be derived from these documents so these are the detailed documentation right all the requirements are captured in these documents but the system behavior is not described over here so what business uh, users will do they will create the use cases how the system behaves exactly as per end user how they are going to use the 
how our client is going to use the system so they prepare the use cases use cases which is derived from these documents and this is prepared by business user or business analyst or you can say business analyst right and from here use cases are delivered to or uh, transferred to development team Bus use cases will be given to development team and testing team so developer will uses uh, those use cases and design their doc design their uh, system and implemented the changes or implemented the requirements so this is how they will do based on the use cases because the system behaviors are defined or given in the use cases similarly testers will use those use cases to derive the test cases detail level test cases from those use cases business use cases so this is the flow guys and uh, let's talk more about use cases so it explains the explains the functionality or requirement the customer requirement or project requirement can be specified in the use cases use case is representation of actions which describes the behavior of the system behavior of system to do a particular task and accomplish the goal so what is the need of use case to get the certain goal right to perform some task and get the to achieve the goal so that is the purpose of use cases it is a technique that helps to identify the test cases and as i have explained earlier from use cases we can derive our test cases it is a description of particular use of the system by a user and uh, there are few things which are important in use cases so the first thing is actor who who is going to use the system actor the second thing is system so actor will use the system to derive the use cases and third is use cases use cases so these are the three uh, i would say the participants actor system and use cases so actor will participate in the system to derive the use cases business use cases so let's talk about what are the different types of use cases so we have uh, two types of use cases diagrammatic use cases the functionality is explained in the diagrammatic format and the second one is technical use cases it explains the functionality or requirement in technical way let's talk about them in detail so what is diagrammatic use cases so a use case diagram is graphical depiction of users possible interaction with the system and the use cases are represented represented by either circles or ovals there are different use cases so actor can be represented like this and if you remember guys uh, probably you might have aware of uml that is uh, a unified modeling technique unified modeling language in fact so using that uh, we create the uh, flow diagram for the use cases so there are different use cases like uh, sequence diagram it explains the flow or path we have activity diagram it explains the task performance how we are going to perform uh, using the activity diagram and state transaction diagram it shows the functionality or state changing from one state to another state so these are the different ways to create the use cases using diagrammatic use cases let me give you an example of diagrammatic use cases so let's say uh, let's talk about student management system student management system so here we have an actor which is which is uh, a student a student and here we have another actor called teacher teacher now what are the different use cases in this student management system so the first use case we can represent using oval so check attendance 
check attendance is one use case another use case could be check uh, timetable timetable this is another use case another could be check uh, timetable attendance or uh, we can say score test score test score what is your uh, test score so this is another use case another use case could be uh, update update attendance attendance another use case update score this is another use case so we have different use cases in this student management system check attendance which is access uh, which is which will be used by both student and teacher right guys and check timetable which will be used by both student and teacher check timetable we have check test score so which will be used by both student and teacher again now we have another use case which is update attendance so who is going to update the attendance which is done by teacher and the last one is update score which will be done by again teacher so these are the different use cases and uh, we have two actors a student and teacher and this this is the whole student management system which will be represented using rectangle right so this is complete uh, student management system guys an example of use cases so these are the different use cases we have we have represented using oval shape now let's move on uh, another thing technical use cases so for the technical use cases below are the details uh, so we should have some details we used to create some format uh, of the technical use cases so use case id should be there a unique number of every case use case name should be given goal of the use case objective requirement importance so certain uh, levels we give like importance level high medium low frequency of use how frequently the requirement is used actors the user who has permission to access the requirement and we have precondition condition to to be satisfied to work with the requirement just like uh, we used to give in test cases description business functionality post condition output or result assumption if any assumption or implicit requirement is given and approval of use cases so this is and another one is changes in requirement again one more if any changes are there in the requirement so this is detail level use cases which is nothing but the technical use case now let's talk about the difference between use case and test case so use case is a representation of actions which describes the behavior of a system to do a particular task to achieve a goal or to perform certain task to achieve a desired output is nothing but the use case which we have discussed earlier test case contains the test data set of instructions to follow and results of the following instructions so already already we have spoken about many a times about the test cases earlier i have created the test case template as well like what are the we have uh, expected result actual result fail pass criteria test data everything we have in uh, everything we have as part of test cases the second difference is use cases are prepared on requirements from brs as we have discussed test cases are prepared on use cases so ideally if you see the process so use cases should be prepared from the business requirement doc documents like brs or frd or frs and test cases are prepared on use cases the use cases cannot be implemented which implies that it is only designed whereas the test cases is designed and later we implemented them later we will execute the test cases as well so basically use cases are executed by business users only and test cases are executed by testers so generally if you see that use cases just for design purpose right for designing purpose to 
later we derive we use those use cases to implement uh, to design the system uh, as per the development perspective and design the test cases as per testers perspective the objective of use case is to get a certain output after the set of operations the objective of test case is to ensure the system is working fine for each given instruction and yields the required result the use case is graphic representation of client requirements this is another another uh, simple definition of use case the use case is graphic representation of client requirements the test case is only documented in an excel sheet it is working as following the step by step function ability to the software ability of the software it is working with the help of testers to validate the software business user executes the use cases testers executes the use cases uh, sorry test cases and result is important in all steps are to be executed together in use case all steps are important and may have a separate result so this is the difference between use case and test case guys and uh, still if you have any questions related to use cases please write down your uh, uh, questions in the comment box of this video please subscribe this channel uh, like and share this video and comment as i have explained earlier if you have any doubts and thank you so much for watching have a nice day bye bye hello friends welcome back to another video of automation testing insider so today i'm going to talk about the difference between test scenario and test case but before i move forward and talk about the differences between test scenario and test case let's talk about what exactly a test scenario and a test case so let's get started with test scenario so what do you mean by test scenario so test scenario describes the end to end functionality to be tested in any application so what do you mean by that so let me just talk about some more features about the test scenario so test scenario focuses on what to test what to test in any application what to test and it is high level documentation high level documentation or we can say one like it has one liner information mostly it has one liner information so it is high level documentation guys and uh, test scenario derived from business requirement document or functional requirement specification so it is derived from business requirement document or functional requirement document so these are the different characteristics uh, about the test scenario let me just give some examples about the test scenario some examples example so let's say we are testing e-commerce website this is e-commerce website now what are the different test scenarios of this e-commerce website so the first page is login page so we are at login page so we can say the login login functionality login functionality is one test scenario and there could be multiple test cases inside this login functionality so this login functionality is one test scenario another test scenario could be home page home page scenarios home page another scenario could be uh, in e-commerce website we are searching the product so searching product itself is a scenario searching product this is another scenario and another scenario could be uh, adding the product into card adding the product into card so that is another scenario making the payment or payment is another scenario so these are the different scenarios so it covers the end to end functionality of any uh, in any application right and uh, you can see it has one liner information on the login functionality if you talk about the login functionality so it doesn't contains uh, all the information about the login functionality so we have only high level uh, information in test scenario so these are the uh, uh, different points about the test scenario now if we talk about test case right so test case what are the different information we have so we have step by step uh, 
uh, procedure right step by step uh, let's say if you talk about the login functionality so there could be multiple test cases in login functionality so here we write different steps in test case and it focuses on two things first thing what to test what to test and second thing is how to test this is important how to test what are what are the uh, different steps to test any functionality and uh, uh, what is the test data so it it uh, contains the test data as well test data and expected result expected result so already we have spoken uh, many times about the test cases so these are the information a test case contains so it focuses on two things what to test and how to test whereas test scenario scenario only talks about what to test so this is about test scenario and test case now let's talk about what are the different other differences between test scenario and test case in detail so this is high level documentation if you talk about test scenario uh, which describes an end to end functionality to be tested whereas test case contains test steps data expected results for testing all the features of an application easy to create and maintain so since it is high level documentation so it's very easy to uh, create and maintain whereas test case is hard to maintain and it's time consuming we need some time to write the test cases for any functionality and guys uh, any anybody can execute the test cases if you write the test cases properly in step by step so anybody can execute the test cases even the user who doesn't know the application very well okay but whereas if you talk about the test scenario until unless if you don't uh, know the functionality you cannot execute the test scenario right so this is another difference test cases are derived from test scenario here test scenarios are derived from test artifacts such as brs and srs software requirement specification and business requirement specification whereas test cases are derived from test scenarios it focuses more on it focuses on more what to test than how to test so it is focuses on what to test rather than how to test and test case a complete emphasis on what to test and how to test it helps in an agile way of testing the end to end functionality so agile way of testing means whenever we don't have much time uh, going live of any product right so we don't have much uh, uh, time so in that case what we can do we can write just uh, we can just write the test scenario and we can execute for that particular sprint so that uh, that is what uh, it is written over here it helps in an agile way of testing the end to end functionality it helps in exhaustive testing of an application so if you want detail level testing so we will follow the test cases right test scenarios are high level actions test cases are low level actions example checking the login functionality of the software and here we have checking the login functionality when entering an incorrect password so there could be uh, different test cases for login functionality right valid password and entering uh, invalid password oh, sorry uh, valid username and invalid password invalid username and uh, valid uh, password and providing both invalid user and invalid password so these are the different test cases of an of login functionality right so this is how we write test scenario and test cases and these are different difference between test scenario and test case so guys thank you for watching this video and uh, please like share and comment if you have any questions and subscribe to this channel if you are new to this channel thank you so much for watching have a nice day bye bye hello friends welcome back to another video of automation testing insider so today i'm going to talk about what is the difference between project and product so many people are getting confused between what is a project and what is a what is the difference between project and product so let's talk about like what is the difference between project and product so let's talk about project first 
so when we develop a software when we build or develop a software for any specific customer based on their needs or their requirements is called a project and when we build a software when we build a software for wide range of customers based on market requirements is called a product so this is the difference between project and product and uh, there could be multiple projects under a product so let me give an example so suppose i am working for a company called x and we are building a software in uh, like trading platform so if you are aware of uh, uh, stock market so there are different segments in stock markets like we have equity segment we have derivative we have forex we have mutual funds and uh, my company x uh, are having different clients we have different clients like client a client b client c client d so these are the different clients we have now client a wants to trade only in equity segment and client b wants to trade equity and derivative both client c wants to wants mutual fund only so we we have we need to work with them in a separate project so here we have a separate like we have a single product but projects are different based on our client client's requirement so this is the difference between project and product and uh, so here you can see uh, uh, like we have multiple projects under a product like we have product uh, a trading platform but based on our uh, clients requirements we we need to deal with separate projects with them now we have two types of companies like we have project based companies and uh, like we have service based companies and product based companies so what happens in service based company okay so like we have infosys tcs they are all dealing with different clients and uh, they are dealing with different projects they are handling different projects with different customers so they are service based clients uh, service based companies and we have product based company companies okay so we have google or microsoft so these are product based companies so like we have product google pay so which is widely used uh, individuals are also using companies are also using this google product uh, youtube or google pay so google pay is nothing but a product youtube is nothing but a product so this is the difference between project and product and uh, service based companies and product based companies so guys if you have any questions or anything then please comment it and uh, and yeah please like share this video and click the bell icon to get the notification for upcoming videos and please subscribe it thank you so much hello friends welcome back to another video of automation testing insider so today i'm going to talk about uh, what even my build what is release and what is the difference between them so many people are getting confused like what is build what is release and how we can differentiate them so they they look similar but they are not quite similar so let's talk about build first so when a new version of the software when a new version of the software is given by the development team to the testing team mm -hmm. for testing purpose that is nothing but a build and when a new version or complete software is given by, given to the end user or customer or in the market when we release the new version of the software to the market or end user or customer so that is nothing but a release or release process and it's a formal process release is a formal process why i call it as formal because once testing is done then only we release the new version of the software to the customer so that is release process so this is the difference between build and release guys so if you see in both the things we are releasing the new version of the software either to the qa team or to the customer then the question arises here is how the how the developer will build a new version of the software so what they will do is uh, there are few reasons they will do uh, they will give the new version of the software so one of the reason is like uh, when we get any defect in the software so we'll raise a defect and to fix that defect they will make the changes to their code and they will compile it uh, at their end once it is fixed they will compile it they will run it and they will compress the code so build is nothing but guys they, they cannot directly give the source code to the testing team for testing purpose so they what they will do is they will compile the code they will run it and they will compress it 
correct so they will it's compressed form basically the build is compressed form and they will deploy it on particular server so in case of testing they deploy it on qvs server and in case of uh, if they we deploy it on production so they will deploy it on production server so that's how they will do so this is the first reason like whenever they, we get the any defect get any defect so they will fix the defect and they will deploy a new version of the software another reason could be if they uh, integrate multiple uh, modules so they will give the new version of the software integrated version of the software to the testing team for testing purpose so that is another reason another reason could be if you get some requirement from the customer if you get the new requirement from the customer they will develop that new requirement and make the make and do the adjustment in their code and they will deploy the new version of the software to the testing team and once testing is done will deploy it on uh, with the help of developer they will deploy it on production server after successfully done uh, with the testing so this is how it is happening in build and release process now guys if we talk about any example like uh, amazon releasing their software in every 11.7 seconds how this is possible how even this is possible when we do it manually right so they are not doing it manually uh, now nowadays we are living in uh, agile worlds or uh, uh, devops world so this process is completed doing by uh, automation right automatically builds will be released to the customer or to the qa server automatically so how it happens correct so we have several tools in the market we have several build tools like we have apache maven apache ant we have gradle and hudson so these are the different tools we have which uh, process uh, this build process automatically which uh, doing this build process automatically so that's the reason they are releasing the software in every 11.7 seconds after making the changes to their uh, code they are making the changes in the ui or whatever as per the requirements they are doing it and they are releasing the software to the customer now i can give uh, an example in uh, selenium automation as well so if you remember guys i have created a, a framework in selenium so if you haven't watched that framework then you can go to the description box of this video you can uh, see the framework uh, related uh, playlist and you can watch that framework so if you talk, talk about uh, example of that so what happens what i have done here there is like i have integrated the selenium framework selenium code with maven and git and github and jenkins so whenever i make any changes to the code automatically it is read by the github right whenever i check in any code to the github it picks up the by the uh, github and automatically builds are running in jenkins and jenkins pipeline so so this is how it is happening guys automatically so yeah this is all about uh, build and release so if you have any questions related to this then please write on the uh, comment box of this video and uh, yeah please like and share this video guys and if you are new to my channel then please subscribe it and click the bell icon to get the notification for upcoming videos thank you so much have a nice day bye bye